Let's all arise for our word of prayer. Let's pray. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In the name of Allah, the most gracious and most merciful. Alhamdulillahirrabbilalamin. All praises belong to Allah, the Lord of this world. Al-Rahmanirrahim. The most gracious and most merciful. Maliki yaumiddin. Maker of this judgment day. Thee alone we worship and Thee alone we ask for help. Show us the straight way. The path of throne you bestow Thy grace. Not of those who earn Thine anger, nor of those who go astray. Rabbana, atina fi dunya hasana. O Lord, grant us those that are good in this world. Wa fil akhirati hasana. Those good in the here hereafter. Wa khina azaban nar. And set us free from hell fire. Wa khina jannata ma'ar abrar. And grant us to enter the paradise with those who are righteous. Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim. O oh, most merciful and most gracious. Wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. All praises belong to Allah, the Lord of this world. Amen. Amen. the fount of every blessings for our opening Assalamualaikum. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our program this morning. If you have noticed, this is a combination of uh, 
Muslim and Adventists. We in the church understand that the biblical root that we have, you know, is just coming from similar uh, background. We believe that uh, Muslims are brothers of true Christians. And in this sense, the Adventist has organized this uh, department in which we have to bridge a relationship between Muslims and Adventists. That's why we have Adventist-Muslims relations. The purpose is that we find understanding in these, you know, sides and uh, foster a good relationship that uh, we may come to understand that we are brothers indeed. Because of this, here at Mountain View, we have uh, Muslim students. And uh, this is a great celebration that the Muslim world are doing. The celebration of Eid al-Fitr. And right now, here in our midst, we are celebrating so that our Muslim students who are with us can also feel at home while they are still uh, having uh, their education in our place. Because of this, we are welcoming all of you this morning and may we can grasp the spirit of this celebration. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Um, this morning we are going to sing a Muslim song, uh, which is in our language, and the title of the song is Alhamdulillah. It's we are giving thanks to the Lord for what He has done to us, and we thank to the Lord because um, we gather together here to worship Him as a family.
Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Idul Fitr, feast of fast breaking, Muslim festival that follows Ramadan, the month of fasting. The three-day religious festival of Idul Fitr celebrates the end of Ramadan, a month of prayer and an abstinence from eating, drinking, smoking, and sexual relations from sunrise to sunset. The celebration begins with the sighting of the new moon of Shawwal, the 10th month in the Islamic lunar calendar, which signals the end of Ramadan, the ninth month. The most important observances of Eid al-Fitr generally take place on the first day. Muslims take part in communal prayers in the early morning at a mosque or in an open space outside their city or town. Eid al-Fitr also entails a religious obligation to offer charity in a fixed amount. In the United States, in the year 2000, that amount was $10 per person. During Eid al-Fitr cities, towns and villages may be de decorated in Islamic countries and people put on their best clothes. Muslim greet neighbors, relatives, and friends at the mosque or on the street, exchanging hugs and wishing one another in Mubarak, blessed holiday. Children may receive presents or gifts of money from their parents and their relatives. Idul Fitr is also a time for visiting friends and relatives. Idul Fitr is one of two major Islamic holidays. The other is Idul Adha, the Feast of the Sacrifice, Eid al-Fitr is trans transli uh, transliterated from Arabic in many different spellings. They include Eid al-Fitr, Eid al-Fitr, Eid al-Fitr, and Eid al-Fitr. Happy Eid al-Fitr and wassalam. Uh, Idol Fitter is one full month of fasting. Every day they are fasting and they believe that when they are fasting, they will receive a full blessings from God. So the parents are teaching their children to do fasting even though they are still small. And two days before Ramadan, all the women and the children, they will help each other to prepare a lot of foods. This food will be served during the Ramadan. During the Ramadan, at 4.30 a.m. in the morning, all the people will gather and they will go to masjid and they will worship God until 7 o'clock in the morning. Right after that, they will go to the house and they will receive blessings from the parents. They will also gather with all the, fa the relatives and all the close friends and say forgive to each other and ask for forgiveness. Right after that, uh, the special moment that they are waiting for is the feast where uh, they will serve all the foods they, that they prepared or already a few days ago. Uh, the significance of us uh, Serving the foods is to share the blessings and they will tend to share their blessings also like money, souvenirs to the children and uh, for those people who are in need. Uh, Ramadan is not only for the Muslim, for Indonesians, but uh, in Indonesia, we are do, we, uh, even though we are Adventists, we already feel uh, Ramadan is something like cultural, part of cult our cultural. So even though we will not pray to God, um, their God, going to masjid, we will still have open house and we will gather with all the relatives and uh, ask for forgiveness and share our blessings to others. Uh, and so this is uh, what we celebrate Idol Fitter in Indonesia. Thank you.
गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन अलकुम वरहमतुल्लि तबरकू टुडे इज द हरी राय दिस द प्रीशियस डे फ्रॉम मुस्लिम आई नो ऑल द क्रिश्चियन इज यू डोंट नो द फीलिंग ऑफ मुस्लिम इज बिकॉज दिस डे इज द वेरी हैप्पी डे फॉर द मुस्लिम आज फॉर गिवनेस फॉर एवरीथिंग एंड एवन योर एनिमीज यू कैन मीट दम इंजोरिंग हरी राय डे Now, <coughs> this I would like to thank you to Doc Adil because this program because I feel is we are have value here in Montem Yuka Leeds, <coughs> and when I was there, Tawi Tawi, Tawi Raya there is the, during this Ramadan for the whole month is they are encouraged the. All people there to fasting, daily fasting, and and also the giving, the rich people giving to the poor. That's and I received this scholarship from Mountain View College to study here in Mountain View. I asked my father to ask permission to him to study here in Mountain View, in Mountain View College, but my father answer is the big no. Because, son, if you are going to study there in Mountain View College, you will become a gopper. You know what is gopper is unclean, eating everything, eating for what like that. And but I try, I try to study study here and and uh, during 2011 I was about to become a seventh year Adventist. But the, when I was there in Sulat, I was attending the seminar there, and the preacher said, "We are, we are all Muslim." Because I asked also a question: Why the Christian, if the Christian converted to Muslim, uh, it becomes Balik Islam? We call Balik Islam. Why the Muslim converted to Christian? They, they not called Balik Christian. <laughs> That's why they said this. The origin of religion is Muslim, and and also the he said the true Muslim is keeping the Sabbath day. Amen. Let's say Amen. And that's all. Thank you. This uh, song, and then the message of this song is, can you explain? Yeah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hala wabarakatuh. Uh, ang uh, this the message of the song uh, it goes like this. Uh, when we are not yet uh, yet here in this world. Uh, God promised us already, and that's uh, the reason why we cry when we are delivered. It's because we lose that promise, and our mission is to look for that promise. And it, if it is our will, we can uh, we can find it, the promise of Allah, and. Yeah, and the rest of the message will be uh, will be uh, explained by my companion here. I feel nervous. <laughs>
We practiced this song just uh, 40, 48 hours ago. Okay, uh, <laughs> let's bear with us. Awala pa kau di adunya Asalin perjanjian auna Pakandangan pakawi inamu Padunya ini wai bayamu Angkat nabut kau jian Angkat dimahin padunya Morning. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Let's peace, blessing, and mercy from Allah be upon all of us. 
This is the third time that we have celebrated the Idul Fitr or Hari Raya Buka. As mentioned by Pastor Samatra earlier, we are doing this to make our Muslim students feel at home. In fact, you have heard them say that uh, this is a grand celebration in their place. So we Adventists also believe that we can participate in activities like this to strengthen our relationship and to show our respect for religious beliefs that are not inconsistent with our own beliefs and much more to honor God. This morning, I would be presenting some basic beliefs and practices of our Muslim brothers and sisters. As you know, the AMR, or Adventist Muslim Relations, was created by the leadership of our church to strengthen uh, bridges of friendship and understanding. I think four years ago, we conducted an AMR dialogue right in our campus that was participated by our Muslim scholars who are coming from the top brass of the Muslim Filipinos. And we are happy that always the comment that we hear is, we'll have more of this. In fact, in one of these statements, one prominent Muslim said that the Adventists of all the religions of the world are the closest to us. As Warki and Bernard were singing earlier, I was really touched to see the intensity of their feeling. And much more, I am now feeling nostalgic because Warki will be graduating. He has stayed in MVC for, I think, four years. And two others are graduating. Some have graduated already. So here we see Brethren, how much MBC has been instrumental in making our Muslim students feel at home. And some of them have discovered the greater light from the Word of God. While we believe in the gems of truth that we find in the Quran, we also believe that there are more truths that can be learned in the Bible. And that is really the purpose of the AMR, to strengthen the bridges of friendship and understanding. We have some technical challenges here, but let's be patient. Let's demonstrate the patience of the saints just as our Muslim friends are also exercising their consideration. So those of you who are watching on YouTube, we want to inform you that this is the third time we are doing this program in our campus because we want to let the world know that Adventists and Muslims have commonalities that we need to celebrate. We have some common grounds that we need to journey on together. By the way, just an advanced notice to all of you, this is just the first part of our program. After this, we'll be moving out for the cultural show and the fellowship meal. And there'll be a part wherein our Muslim students will be dancing their cultural dances. And as mentioned even by Fisya, it is a time also of forgiving. And also a time of giving. 
So that's why we have announced that we would appreciate it very much if you can bring some clothing and cash gift. If you have not, remember that, and there's no problem. We'll be distributing some small sheets of paper where you can write your pledges, maybe. No? I have not arranged with the business office if it will be charged to our accounts, no? but at least no? it matters not what amount you are willing to give as long as the spirit is there. No? Yeah. And those of you who are watching via YouTube, you can also pledge your support to our Muslim students. By the way, the offering that we'll be receiving in a little while will be for our orphans. We have an orphanage and also for our Muslim students. So, what does the word Islam mean? You know, according to Muslim scholars themselves, Uh, this part is included in our program this morning because we want this activity to be a learning opportunity also. Many of us do not know what is Islam and what are their beliefs, what do they stand for. Oftentimes we look at the extreme side of Islam. In fact, there are also beautiful wonders in Islam. In fact, the word Islam means submission. Some scholars would even say, it means peace. Therefore, a Muslim is one who is submissive to the will of God. And they know that. So I hope we have a better understanding or a better way of looking at our Muslim friends. So what are their five pillars? Okay. One is confession or the shahada. Now, we often hear this, no? La ilaha illallah wa Muhammad Rasulullah. There is no God but Allah. Muhammad is his messenger. So these are the first words to strike the ear of a newborn Muslim babe. They are also the last to be uttered at the grave. In the hospital, when a Muslim patient is about to die, the relatives or anyone gathered would recite this la ilaha illallah wa muhammad rasulullah this verbal audible recitation of the confession of faith is required for acceptance into islam in other words to become a muslim one need only recite the confession before two witnesses so it's not really complicated to become a muslim then we have prayer or salat it is the obligatory worship of god which consists of five daily prayers preceded by necessary ceremonial ablutions. Uh, by the way, let me just interject. No? Muslims are very particular with cleanliness. That before they enter the mosque, they have to clean their hands, wash their face. Before they even hold the Quran, they wash their hands. So a faithful Muslim turns his face towards Mecca and recites the prescribed prayer. Five times before sunrise, noon, late afternoon, sunset, and about two hours later. Third pillar, oh, by the way, before that, no? the use of Arabic as a medium of expression is absolutely incumbent upon him, no matter what his native tongue may be. In its stereotyped form, prayer is not so much petition or supplication as it is the mention of Allah's name. The third is the alms or zakat. No? The terms alms giving and performing the worship are linked together before or about 20 times in the Quran as a kind of formula describing those who are, have entered Islam. The amount given varies for different categories. On grains and fruits, it is 10% if watered by rain, 5% if watered by irrigation, and 2.5% on money. 
Its object is social service, giving alms to the poor and the needy. Then fasting. So during Ramadan, or the month of Ramadan, abstinence from all food and drink is enjoined from the dawn till sunset. It is binding on all adult Muslims of both sexes, save for the aged, sick, pregnant women, nursing mothers, and travelers. Interestingly, even the swallowing of one's own saliva or the insertion of medicine in ear or nose or head wound or an injection are considered as invalidating the fast. The thoughts of self-discipline and penitence are also prominent. The month of Ramadan was chosen because in it, the Quran was first revealed. Then the fifth pillar is the pilgrimage or the Hajj. The annual pilgrimage to Mecca is an obligation a Muslim must perform once in a lifetime, at least once in your lifetime, provided he can support himself during the journey and can also arrange for the provision of his dependents during his absence. So when you have come from a Hajj, you are already looked up to as having attained a higher stage of Islam. Then there's also what we call the creed of Islam. And it is this. It is not righteousness that ye turn your faces to the east and to the west, but righteous is he who believeth in Allah and the last day and the angels and the scripture and the prophets. In other words, these are the five articles of faith. Belief in Allah or God, belief in the last day, the angels, the scripture and the prophets. Now let's go over this quickly. Okay. For example, Muslims believe in the existence of God. They believe in His unity, His absolute power, and in the other essential attributes of an eternal and almighty being. And it is the most important part of Islam. They have also believed in the last day. Eschatological teachings in Islam abound. Other terms that denote the last day are the resurrection or day of standing up, day of separation, day of reckoning, day of awakening, day of judgment, among others. Angels okay, is also part of their beliefs. No? They are believed to be superior beings, created of light, endowed with life, speech, and reason, sanctified from carnal desire or anger, and obedient to God's commands. Every believer is said to be attended by two recording angels, one of whom records the good deeds and the other the evil. There are two angels who examine all the dead in their graves. Angels are believed to be intercessory prerogatives, act as guardians, uphold the throne of God, supervise hell, and exercise evil angels who are of a different species. Next, the Holy Scripture. Holy writing, holy book, or the word of God are all terms generally understood by Muslims to refer to the Quran but more correctly include all books acknowledged by Muhammad to be divine, divinely inspired writings. Among these are the Taurat or the Torah or the first five books of Moses given to Moses, the Zabur or Psalms given to David, the Injil or Gospel to Jesus, and the Quran to Muhammad. Though Islam grants special honor to the scriptures other than the Quran, the belief is widely held that both the Old and New Testaments have been corrupted. So it is not so much to our advantage to argue with them on the basis of the Old and New Testaments. The last article of faith is belief in the prophets. According to Muslim thought, a prophet or Nabi is anyone directly inspired by God or called by God. Muhammad is said to have said that there were 124,000 prophets and 315 apostles or messengers, but only 28 of them of whom are mentioned in the Quran. Six are dignified with special titles like Adam, the chosen of God, Noah, the prophet of God, Abraham, the friend of God, Moses, the converser with God, Jesus, the spirit of God, and Muhammad, the messenger of God, which they believe is also the last prophet. So what is the basis for their faith and practice? The basis for faith and practice is the Quran and the Sunnah or sayings 
and living habits of Muhammad, peace be upon him. The Hadith is a written collection of the words and life example of Muhammad compiled by elite learned Islamic scholars or the ulama. Islamic law or the Sharia is drawn from the Quran and Hadith and encodes the way Muslims should live and the path they should follow. So in the Philippines, by observation, many of our Muslim friends are more knowledgeable on the Hadith and the Quran. And that's one difficulty that we have when we converse with them. Because if our Muslim friends only are more on the Quran, there is not much difficulty there because there are many common grounds that we have on the basis of the Quran. But our problem is they are more acquainted with the Hadith, which in our uh, parlance we say traditions. So what is Adventist Muslim relations? As mentioned by Pastor Sumatra, let me just summarize. AMR is primarily concerned with building bridges of understanding with Muslims who are our neighbors, our colleagues, and our friends. Most Muslims do not know that Adventists are similar to them in many beliefs and practices. That's what we promote in the AMR. And let me quote this again. According to one prominent Muslim scholar, among the religions in the world, the SDAs are the closest to us. So let's work on this as a starting point. They themselves acknowledge that we are the closest to them. Come on, earth. 
to give to the nations that the Lord who reigneth above has sent us his Son to save us and show us that God is love and show us that God is love for the darkness shall turn to dawning and the dawning to noon Good morning, everybody. As we would be having our few minutes of reflection, I'd like to bring your attention to an important study that uh, we would be doing. If you would look at uh, We're having little technical challenges and issues, but I hope uh, it would work well. I'd like to greet everybody, peace and grace from, from the Lord, since today is Im important to, to our mis Muslim brothers, and uh, today brings a reminder of uh, the sacrifice of uh, our dear brethren of uh, the other persuasion. But I'd like to bring your attention and I'd like to start with Bismillah Raham Ir Rahim. And because of this, I'd like to reflect on few reflections about righteousness. 
Dr. Adil mentioned, if we would be looking into the Quran, we would see a lot of gems that is in the Quran. Like, for example, the word taqwa. Taqwa is important. And I'd like to build on this uh, short note from the Quran. What is taqwa? And those of you who have been in MVC, you might smile and say, uh, Pastor, I think this is taqwa or tofu. No, this is taqwa. Allow me to glean from Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, verses 1 to 4. And this reads that this is a book now, it, it reads on this note, and in it, there is guidance. Guidance, without doubt, to those who fear Allah. It's very interesting that in, in the Quran, you don't readily find it in the English translation, but when you try to look deeper, the fear of Allah... To those who have the fear of Allah, you will find this taqwa. I'm not an Arabic scholar, but in my little gleanings from what I found, this is very important. Why? Because the fear of those who fear Allah are called the mutakins. And those who are mutakins are those who have Taqwa. Taqwa is righteousness. Mutakin is someone who has experienced righteousness. And those who fear Allah are blessed. They have assurance. And you can find it in Surah Al-Baqarah verses 1 to 4. They are the mutakins. They have experienced taqwa. Now, before going back to taqwa, let's go to a mutakin. What is a mutakin? Surah Al-Baqarah, verses 1 and 2, highlights five parts of it. And allow me to, you know, in the Bible we call it exegit, this one. In the Arabic, you could say injit, this one. Because you try to bring out what is there in the Quran. So you find several things. A mutakin is someone who believes in Allah, the unseen. Someone who is steadfast. That is someone who is faithful. You know, prayer. Praying five times to our brothers, the Muslims and sisters. This is a pillar to them. That's why some Muslims would say, you know, you Christians, you Adventists, sometimes you, you, you don't really live up to your faith because we don't see you praying. Muslims are not afraid to show that they are prayerful people. One, believe on the unseen. Second, they are steadfast in their prayer life. They are faithful. They are earnest. Third, they are stewards. Fourth, you could divide it fourth to two sub-items. They believe in the revelation that is given and in the revelation that is to come, meaning prophetic. Third, or the last, sorry, the fifth, is assurance of the hereafter. Oh, this is, to the Christians, this is what we call eschatology. There is hope. There is a blessed hope. Now, let's go back to what is taqwa. What is taqwa? Let me share something from Surah Al-Hajj, chapter, chapter 22, verse 32. And it reads, Such in his states, and moreover holds the honor and symbols of Allah, 
in the sacrifice of animals, such honor should come truly from piety. And piety is, trans is coming from the Arabic word taqwa. So here comes what is taqwa? Taqwa is your faithfulness. This is righteousness. This comes from the experience of someone like Cain and Abel when they were offering. This was the allusion of the text in the Quran. So those who followed God in the offering, in the symbols of God, in the offering of the animals, they are pious. Oh, it brings a lot of gems of truth. Why? There is righteousness not in the outward manifestation, but in the inward. Taqwa is not simply outward. Taqwa is righteousness that is from within, that goes out, that radiates. That means when Allah gives you righteousness, you then have the outward form. It is not the outward form that brings you the inward form. That's why you can pray, even in the hadith you can find, you can pray, pray five times, but if Allah is not in your mind, the hadith said, it makes no veil. So, friends, when we talk of taqwa, this is taqwa. A taqwa, what is taqwa? Going back to the first premise, a mutakin is a person who has fear of Allah. The fear of Allah is the taqwa, the righteousness. You know, this righteousness is an answer to a sin problem. By the way, in the Quran, you cannot find sin. The word sin is not found in the Quran. What you find closest to the sin is shame in the Arabic mind thought or in the, or in the, in the Muslim or in the Islam mind frame. Shame. This shame is so much associated with, with jinn. You know what's jinn? Evil. Jinn is evil. You have magic genie. Genie is evil. Evil spirit. That's the jinn, the tiniest form of evil in the Quran. This is addressed not by outward manifestation, but in the Quran, this is addressed with righteousness that comes from God. And I say, praise Allah, because there is righteousness that comes from Him. Not righteousness that is from us. To my dear Christian brothers, you find the same thought found in Romans chapter 3, verses 21 to 25. If I'll be allowed, it reads, But now there is a righteousness apart from our righteousness. I'll paraphrase this one. And this righteousness comes from God. And this righteousness was manifested in the atoning work of Christ. And if you would ask me as our morning meditation this morning to our dear Muslim friends who are here and those who are listening and those Christians who are here, what is taqwa? Very simple. This is God's righteousness. Something that we should long for, not something that we should produce, but something that God gives and my prayer is, may we experience this taqwa. This is my prayer. Amen. The celebration of the Hari Raya Buka is climaxed by the 
gesture of forgiveness and also of giving. So we have announced that we would appreciate it very much if you can bring your gifts this morning. So while the Manupali strings would render a musical part, anything that you have brought, like used clothings or even cash gift, no? uh, please uh, drop inside the box. We have uh, prepared a box and it's purely voluntary. Those of you who would say you forgot or you're not prepared, don't worry. No? We have provisions for you. And the provision is we'll distribute some sheets of paper where you'll write your pledge. Whatever amount, okay? then write your name. Please write your name and the amount. Do not write my name huh? and then state the amount. It's your name. like to ask everybody to stand as we pray for our mission and we pray for peace. O oh God in heaven, you are God of our forefathers, God of Abraham, and a God of all generations of this time. We come to you, O oh Father, because we recognize that you are a God who sustains us. You are a God, a source of love and peace. At this very moment in our celebration, we invite your holy presence, O God, that we could experience peace and joy. You are a God of love. In fact, the short description of your being that you are love. And when there is love, there is peace. Lord, we are bringing to you our mission. This word been adulterated by sin and we don't have total peace. But we thank you of the spirit of giving that you have, that while we were yet sinners, you died for us. And there is an invitation for us to believe on what 
you have given, to believe in the gift that you have given. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believeth in him will not die, but have everlasting life, that we will be in heaven where continuous peace and love will be experienced by everybody. Lord, as a corporate church, we have this mission to tell all nations, all peoples, about the gift that you have given. In fact, that giving of gift that you have bestowed to us is being symbolized by our giving of gift to the unfortunate, to the orphans, and to other people. In, far, in front of us is the box that is giving us a symbol of what it means to love, what it means to experience peace. Lord, as we have this mission to bring peace and to bring love to all nations, let it be that it will start in us personally. As the prayer says, help us that we become an instrument of peace. Where there is hatred, help us, Lord, to give love. Where there is injury, pardon. When there is doubt, faith. And help us, O Lord, to offer forgiveness. May the loving kindness and your presence be in each one of us in this early part of the morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let there be peace for our closing song. Merciful God and most loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for the success of the Ramadan at Al Fitr. We thank you, Lord, that we can be more holier in your sight when we practice this fasting. We pray that you will continue to guide us 
and to bless us as we bring peace to the world and share the mercy. Today, Father, we celebrate with our Muslim brothers throughout the world that we are their brothers and sisters in your sight. We pray that we can bring peace, unity, and love to one another. And now we pray that you will continue to bless this world, our surrounding, our community, especially our place here in Mindanao. We pray also for our for the food that we're going to share, for the food that we're going to eat this morning as our celebration in your name. Thank you for the next program that we're going to witness and see. Thank you also for forgiving our sins and for the blessed hope of salvation in your kingdom. We ask this in your holy name. Amen. We thought we'll be moving out for the next part, which is the fellowship meal and the cultural presentation. But there is a strong advice that we would rather stay. So for just a few minutes, we'll give chance to our students to set the tables. Okay. Uh, students. And then the next part will be, or while we are eating our breakfast, there will be cultural presentations. So please give space. No? Give space so that we can set the tables in their proper places. Jing, 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 Jingoy. Ano siguro? Oh, paana lang? Oh, paana lang yapon? Okay. And the second part, by the way, will still be covered by our crew from the technical department of our church. Table. So, Dr. Maria Gemini Asok will be our MC for the next part. Please don't go home. We have to eat our breakfast together. Pwede kaya punjing. Kamu bala basta. I thought anak ba? At to kaya pun. Oh, si kaya pun. Si kaya pun. Please don't go home. 